Hello people, this is Isaiah Ema. Welcome back to the channel. If you guys have been following me on my other social media, you may remember that I'm a big cartoon nerd. Most notably, Disney shows are the ones I always end up watching like 90% of the time, give or take. At the moment, The Ghost of Molly McGee is my favourite. This is a show that I've been wanting to make a video on for a long time. The Owl House has gotten a video, Amphibia has gotten two, and Phineas and Ferb has gotten plenty. I don't know, some of them I privated. I think it's about time the ghost of Molly McGee got a video from me. And since the show ended three weeks ago, and a lot of people in the community are sad because of it, myself included, I figured now was the perfect time, especially since I didn't do a season one finale recap because I was still on my YouTube lead. So before I give my final thoughts, let me give a quick history lesson of how the show happened. The show was created by Bill Motts and Bob Roth, a duo that had been working at Disney for decades, ever since the 90s. They were working on cartoon episodes and straight to video movies, like Lion King 2. In 2007, they conceived The Curse of Piper McGee. It was going to be about the titular Piper and her family moving to Transylvania and coming across a ghost called Count who places a curse on her. The duo pitched it to Nickelodeon, but were declined. They continued to work with Disney, and after finishing LEGO Star Wars The Freemaker Adventures, they pitched the show to Disney with a new title, The Curse of Molly McGee. Disney liked it, and it was officially greenlit in July 2019. Two years later, on October 1st, 2021, the show, with another new name, The Ghost and Molly McGee, premiered. This show is about the McGee family moving to their forever home in the fictional town of Brighton. Wait, isn't the real life Brighton in England? Molly McGee, voiced by Ashley Birch, discovers a ghost living in the new house called Scratch, voiced by Dana Snyder. He tries placing a curse on her, only for it to backfire, connecting him to Molly. Despite their differences, Scratch eventually grows fond of Molly and the rest of her family, including her little brother Daryl, voiced by Michaela Dietz, her father Pete, voiced by Jordan Klepper, and her mother Sharon, voiced by Somalie Montano, who also voices their grandma Nin. Throughout the show, more supporting characters start to arrive, including Molly's best human friend Libby, voiced by Laura Jill Miller, Scratch's ghost friend Jeff, voiced by Eric Edelstein, and the ghost hunting family The Chens, particularly Oliver and June, voiced by Alan Lee and Sue Ann Pien respectively. It ran for two seasons and was originally going to have a third, even getting ten episode scripts ordered, which are actually on the internet archive now, but was sadly cancelled due to low Disney Plus viewership. So now that we have all that sorted out, here are my full thoughts of the show while spoiling a few things to give context to some of the show's strong points. You have been warned. Believe it or not, I've been a fan of the show before it even premiered. It was back in July 2021 when I was temporarily watching a stream regarding an Owl House and Amphibia crossover. Before the actual panel started, a clip was shown of a show that was coming in a few months. And that show was The Ghost of Molly McGee. The art style and animation looked unique and sharp, the characters were super charming and funny, and the premise, while being a Disney-fied Billy and Mandy, stood out and I was intrigued and more than ready to give this show a chance. And gave it a chance I did. The two segments of the first episode, The Curse and First Day Frights, do all the things a first episode like this should do. It structures the premise that creates the path for the storyline of the show, we get introduced to our main characters while also saying hi to some supporting characters, and humour that can make viewers laugh or even chuckle. The casting stood out to me when I first watched the show. I was thrilled to find out that Molly was played by Ashley Birch of all people. Before Molly McGee, I mainly knew her from a game called Life is Strange, where she played Chloe Price. And honestly, Nobody else could have played Molly. Some of the other actors I already knew of, like Michaela Dietz from Steven Universe and Owl House, but some of them, particularly Dana Snyder as Scratch, were new to me. I thought the lineup of guest stars was solid, with Tom Kenny, Mary of Harrington, Natasha Rothwell, Tony Hale, and even Greta Gerwig. Yes, the director of Barbie appears as herself. Hi, I'm Greta Gerwig. With Greta Gerwig attached, we'll have no problem getting international distribution. Ah, like a glove. Pictures up, cameras are rolling, ghosts are cuddly, and action. Uh, okay, that's actually pretty awesome. I mentioned before that the art style was unique, and, well, it is. It fits with the show's energetic tone, and it allows for some really clever, funny, and even heartfelt expressions on the characters. This is especially helped by the animation. It's quick, energetic, and knows when to slow down. Honestly, the art style and animation were one of the things that pulled me into the show because I had never seen anything like it. Again. Fan before day one. And the tone just puts me in a happy mood every time I watch this show. Part of this is thanks to the writing, characters, and songs. If I had to pick a favourite character, it would probably be Libby. I found myself relating to her quite a bit, especially with her love of writing. This is going to be a huge call, but there was not one bad episode across the two seasons. Granted, that is becoming more common with these Disney TV shows for me, but I was especially crossing my fingers for the Ghost and Molly McGee to follow suit, and thank God it did. Some of my favourites from season one include The Curse, 
Fights, First Day Frights, Hal and Harriet, Getting the Band Shell Back Together, Muzzle 12 Libby, Talent Show, Scratch the Surface, Festival of Lights, The Don't Gooder, Out of House and Home, Home is Where the Haunt is, All Night Ply, The Jig is Up, and Molly vs. the Ghost World. And as for Season 2, my favourites are The New Paranormal, Bookmarks the Sprite, A Soda to Remember, A Period Piece, I Wanna Dance with Some Ollie, Fright Me As on Main Street, Like Father Like Libby, All in the Mind, Carbon Zero Heroes, Davenport's and Demise, Welcome to Neko Comic Con, The Grand Gesture, Jinx vs. the Human World, and The End. Wow, I did both of those lists the first try. Wow. The rest of the episodes are fantastic, but these are the episodes that stuck with me the most. These are episodes that have the credentials that make an episode brilliant with humour, emotions, charm, pacing, and development. And some of them were for particularly special reasons, whether it was because of a specific scene or song, representation from a character, or even just making me feel something in a good way. And speaking of the songs, they are tremendously brilliant. It takes a page from Phineas and Ferb and has one in every episode. Some even have more than one. All of them, while short, are spectacular and fit with the theme of the show. When I first heard that there would be a song in every episode, I was excited because it was around this time that I started to enjoy music once more, whether I was singing, playing an instrument when I had the chance, or even just simply listening to it. The music just makes me groove every time, and some of these songs I listen to every time I get the chance, and some of them I also sing. Don't judge me. There is a playlist, but there are only five songs for some reason, and one of them is the intro song. It's a fun and catchy intro, don't get me wrong, I can't get it out of my head, but Come on, Disney. Release more of its songs. This is actually why certain episodes like Scratch the Surface and Bookmarks the Sprite are among my list of favourite episodes, because the songs connected to the episodes are that good. But despite being a music lover, the music isn't my favourite aspect of the show. It is the amount of representation and heavy topics inserted into the show. You have the standard ones like LGBTQ+, in different cultures, which is the representation that has been done beforehand in cartoons, but the ghost in Molly McGee goes one step further with neurodivergence and even menstruation. Yeah, the episode A Period Piece is about Libby getting her first period. Move over, Turning Red and Baymax, you have this episode to share a room with now. Thanks, Buford. Bye! The representation of neurodivergent characters impressed me the most. I've had autism for all my life, so I was ecstatic to find out there would be autism rep in this show, and it resulted in June Chen, who was introduced in season 2. And they knocked her out of the park. I was satisfied. And while I would have wanted to see more of June, I was happy with what we got. I would have more to say about the show's representation, but I do want to continue this review. However, I do recommend going over to a channel called Sunnyland Productions, which has made tons of videos about the topics I've mentioned that's related to Molly McGee, as well as other topics such as internet culture, and inherited prejudice. And he is making a video about neurodivergence representation, which he has been trying to make for months. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description below. The last thing I wanted to discuss before moving on is the emotional way. You'd think with a show like Molly McGee, the last thing you'd expect to do would be cry. But you're wrong. When the show was still in its first half of season one, I thought that the sad feelings would come later on. But that thought was out the window when I first heard the song It's a Lose Lose from Scratch the Surface. It was a song about Molly not wanting to lose his two best friendships with Scratch and Libby, with Libby being the primary focus on who Molly wanted to stay friends with. But because she's hiding Scratch from her, she fears she can't really be best friends with her. And with the song being a strong ballad sung beautifully by Ashley and Dana, I kinda had to let my eyes water, and some other songs and scenes in the show followed suit. Though strangely enough, it can be a good sad, because this is the kind of show that always makes me happy, and the emotional moments just make me feel like while this is making me tear up, I don't mind it. Especially when it came to the series finale, when Scratch is forced to make the biggest decision of his entire afterlife. It's so sad and depressing that I I, I can't even talk about it here, because I don't want to end up crying on video, so let's just wrap up the review before it's too late. In the end, The Ghost of Molly McGee is a show that came to my life at the perfect moment. It had everything I liked, and I was thrilled to be on this ride from start to finish. And I showed my love on social media unlike any show before. Several of my social media posts, whether it was memes, fan art, or praising the show in general, got the attention of Bill and Bob, who liked a few of them. Back when Molly and Libby was the top ship for the fandom, I hosted a fan art week surrounding the two, and actually got some amazing submissions from other fan artists. Heck, back in June of last year, I cosplayed as Oliver Chen, Molly's love interest and June's brother. <laughs> I said June twice in one sentence. But now that the show's over, will I stop loving the show? The answer is never. In fact, I've got an announcement to make once this review is over. If Amphibia and the Owl House were the next Gravity Falls, The Ghost in Molly McGee was the next Phineas and Ferb. At least for me. And I'm gonna end this review by reading from my final thought speech that I made when the show ended. This is a show that I have been a fan of for the past two and a half years. 
Before the show even premiered, clips and trailers had me drawn in thanks to the cute art style, likeable characters, and hilarious chuckles. And when it finally premiered, the wait was worth it. As the show went on, it got even better, and every time I watched it, it put a big smile on my face. It has relatable and charming characters, jokes that make me laugh every time, music that I listen to constantly, stories that progress naturally, and it even has its emotional moments that just hit me, whether it's from a character moment or a sad song. Plus, the representation and themes in this show are through the roof. LGBTQ+, holidays, mental health, menstruation, and even neurodivergence. As someone with autism, I was delighted to see this kind of appreciation. This has has easily become my favourite cartoon and I'm honestly not sure what's going to top it. I will never stop loving the ghost in Molly McGee. There was not one bad episode and even the small issues are just teeny nitpicks. Thank you Bill Motts, Bob Roth, the cast, crew and Disney for making an absolute masterpiece that I know I will be returning to in the future. Your show has inhappified my life for the better. Thank you for watching. Before I end the video, I have an exciting announcement to make. Going back to the channel I brought up earlier, Sunnyland Productions, the channel runner, Chandler Derache, is making a fan episode called The Ghost and Molly McGee Haunted Mansion. And I'm excited to announce that I was cast as Oliver Chen about a month ago. I cosplayed the character, and now I get to play the character. I can't spoil anything else except for the fact that it'll be an animatic storyboard project. Kind of like Gravity Falls Return to the Bunker by Kian Carlel. I'm also hoping to storyboard a scene, but who knows what my workload will look like. Nevertheless, I am super excited for this project, and here's a bit of a teaser. The site of the Chicago Fire and a haunted mansion in New Orleans. When hinges creak in doorless chambers. We spent a couple of weeks here in New Orleans when we were filming our road trip videos because there was so much to cover, and we still barely scratched the surface. Also, Chandler will be running a charity stream called Operation Enhappification. The stream will feature the cast and crew of the show, and the proceeds will go to Give Kids the World, a non-profit organization that provides dream vacations to unwell children and their families. I will also appear on that stream, so be on the lookout. If you guys want more information, feel free to stay tuned on Chandler's channel. And again, he has made excellent Molly McGee videos that I recommend you guys check out. If you want to keep updated on my videos, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and comment below your thoughts on the Ghost in Molly McGee. And if you want to support me even further, head to my Patreon page. If you support me on my videos, you'll get a shout out at the end of every video, as well as progress updates. And if you support me on my art, you'll get some sneak peeks. You could also support me for both if you want. That's about it, and until next time, stay safe, have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video. Disney liked it, and it was officially... Disney... <laughs> <laughs> but the ghost in Molly McGee go as well as other topics such as inherited culture and inherited prejudice. Wait, what? Oh my god, I'm an idiot. And the emotional moments just make me feel like while this is making me tear up. If you want to, s <sighs> if you want to keep updated on my videos, make sure you subscribe and ring the video. What? Why is that? In the